Hi and welcome. In today's video, we'll be making a handheld maze puzzle. Small enough that you can pack it in your luggage and take it with you anywhere you like. It's a good device to pass time by. Back in the day when I was younger, we used to buy these lucky packets and you never knew what prize you'd get until you opened the packet up. And the maze used to be one of them. Join me today as we explore Fusion 360 candle and use the CNC machine to make it. Let's hop over to Fusion 360. Before we hop over to Fusion 360, here's a quick demonstration. While you watch the demonstration, I just want to mention that the Xbox Game Bar is not a good tool to use as a screen recorder as it doesn't record pop-up windows in any of the software except for the actor screen. So bear with me as I'll walk you through what you need to click in order to go from one space to another. So this is our work area. So we want to select an image and import it into a particular plane. So after you've imported your image in Fusion, you select the plane and then drag it into the quadrant that you want and then click enter and your canvas has been successfully imported. With that done, let's scale up our image to match our workpiece. So under your browser tab, there's a folder called Canvas, which contains your image. Right click on your image and click Calibrate. Calibrate allows you to scale up the image to the size of your workpiece. I measured 80 millimeters by 80 millimeters for my workpiece, and I entered those dimensions. And then after that, we want to click the Create tool because we want to create a sketch and we'll need to select our plane. So when you click this, you'll see that our image is not located in the center. So we'll go back to our canvas and our image and right click on image, but we'll say edit canvas this time. And then what we want to do is we want to center our canvas either by the origin or by the bottom left corner. And I chose the bottom left corner to be my zero location. But you can choose what you like. Then again, we will go to Create and select our Sketch Tools. So if you click the box with the plus, you select your plane again, and then it will allow you to now draw what you want. What we want to do is to use the, the Create option and use the Line Selection. What the Line Selection allows us to do is it allows us to trace all the walls of the maze puzzle and then we will extrude these images such that it creates the wall in the workpiece profile. So this process is a lengthy process and there's no way to get around this process. Fusion 360 doesn't allow you to import an image and then get that image in some vector format or get that image with the outline of the image highlighted in a particular font. So we have to do this manually. But while we're doing this, we'll just discuss what it is we're doing. So we're creating the profile of the maze, which will allow us to create the walls that the CNC will leave out. So everywhere that we not boxing, or creating into a rectangle will be left, but everywhere else, so like all the white space is where the the bit is going to travel in and dig out that whole process and then leave the whole profile that we're selecting now. But uh, just as a, as a note for somebody who's watching this now, what I would first do is, because I already did this, what I would first do is I would say draw your profile, your 80 by, or in my case, 80 by 80 millimeter profile, extrude that. Then switch on your canvas so that you can see it, and then draw this profile on top of your canvas. And then when you extrude it, all you're going to do is you're going to do a subtraction extrude where you subtract the path, or rather subtract the depth of the part, path, of the maze and that'll be way easier because you'll see when I get to 
the part where I want the base to now show, I had to do some funny extrusions, extruding it longer, extruding it shorter, and things like that. But for now, I'm just going to fast forward this process until we get to that part I was discussing. So these are the last few clicks until we complete our trace of this image and literally we're done. So click finish at the top right-ish corner and then you'll see the highlighted path. And now we can say that that's where the bit will remove all the material and leave the walls that we've just highlighted now. So you see, when you click extrude, if you pull the path like I did now, do you see that you're pulling the path that we actually don't want to remain? So what I did was I now had to draw the rectangle on top, the actual work piece, the 80 by 80 millimeters, and then extrude that. And this is what I was talking about earlier when I was mentioning I had to do some funny extrusions because now when I extrude this, you have the part you want, how you want it, but you also have some stuff under the workpiece. So I had to now extrude that in the negative direction and then extrude the other one in the positive direction, you see. But it's not, not to say it's not doable, but if I had just done it the previous way or the if I just started by drawing the workpiece first, it would have been way easier. But nevertheless, it did happen. I was successful in rectifying this because now I'm going to click that and I'm going to extrude it to zero and then I'm going to pull everything down you see there you go perfect and enter ah oh, come on what am I doing now okay so I pulled the floor down now I need to pull the walls there we go and then boom zero and then enter Okay, a lot of things was happening here, but in the end, we got it to work. So you see the, the maze looks perfect now, but now it's just a matter of scaling it such that it has the height dimensions of my workpiece. And for me, that was six millimeters. And then use the inspect tool to make sure that your dimensions are what you desire. And you can see six millimeters. So then now we have to extrude the inner part of it by 5 millimeters or a total of 5 millimeters such that we leave 1 millimeters as the floor base. And then there's our maze. And then a few things we have to do was just to test that every single space is more than 5 millimeters because the balls have a, they vary, they have a diameter of 4.55. Uh, millimeters. So I wanted to make sure that every wall was bigger than, the space was bigger than 5 millimeters. And as you can see there, I forgot to extrude that particular barrier. And it was a quick fix because now we know what um, what dimension we wanted. And it worked. And then it didn't meet our spacing distance. So I just had to snip that and correct that. And then just draw it in again, but draw it in shorter, in line with the other wall, and then extrude it again. So after the correction, we just need to measure the distance between the walls to make sure it complies. And then we're done with our design, and we're ready to go into manufacturing. After that is done, you need to click on the design tab and scroll down to the manufacturing tab where we will start to set up the process for the machine. So under the setup tab, select new setup and then select machine and select the generic three axis. Then go over to the stock tab under stock offset mode, select no additional stock, then click OK. Next, you want to click the 2D option to see all the drop downs and then select 2D pocket. Then you might want to just click the home uh, button so that you can see 
your workpiece in the isometric view. And then what you need to do there is select a tool. And then in the tool selection part, you click and I selected a three millimeter flat end under the, the aluminum tools. And then you click OK. And then you need to select your pocket selection or your geometry where it will pocket out. When you click the floor, it highlights it blue. And then you can move to the next tab, which is your height. I just use, usually leave it as it is, or I reduce it to five millimeters, three millimeters, three millimeters, three millimeters. And then what you want to do is go over and set up your passes tab and then click OK. Then in the top tab where it says action there, you can click simulate and see how your G code will perform during the operation. Play around with the settings, see how you want the bit to look, how you want the material to look, and then click start and simulate your workpiece. And then you can see how the workpiece will perform each stage or each instruction of G-code. And yeah, you, you've essentially finished your, your programming. And then now you just need to export the G-code by clicking the action tab again and saying post your G-code. And then your G-code will be generated and you can save it to a location that you want to, or a location on your desktop where you know it is, and then we'll go over to Candle, the software. Hey, YouTubers, so this is Candle, and this is where we import our G code that we generated in Fusion 360. So you click File Open, you select your file path, and then bam, you get your model in, in Candle. So on the top, right corner there, you can bring it back to screen, you can check the top view, you can check the front side view, and you can check the isometric view. And then to your right, you've got different parameters that you can use, so that's the spindle speed, the rate at which the CNC will move engraving the G-code. You can change that, force it to move it faster, override the initial speeds. So we have the workpiece set up on the machine and as you can see my origin point is no longer where I had initially set it. It is now set in the middle. I did this because my workpiece is not exactly 80 by 80 millimeters. It's 90 by 80 millimeters. So to get the maze in the center of this workpiece, I changed its origin to start from the center. That way when it goes left and right, it goes equal distances, an equal distance in either direction. After lockdown, I intend on getting a better clamp or a better setup for clamping my workpiece to the machine because these pieces work, but they are a bit complicated to set up and they sort of deform the corners of your workpiece. That's something I found out after when I was done with this process. So we'll sort that out after self-isolation when I have time to go to hardware stores and see what we can create. So from our passes tab, I had selected multiple depths and gave it a set size or a step size of one millimeter. So it doesn't plunge the whole five millimeters in one go. It takes it in increments as you've seen in this video. Another setting I selected was finishing passes. This just adds an additional step. So instead of completing the last um, one millimeter, it'll break it down into 0 0.5 increments and then which will leave a sort of smooth finish towards the end. So yeah, guys, um, that was the maze project that we did together. And it looks like it's coming out very nice. So thanks for joining me in this endeavor of ours. 
and as soon as the piece finishes we will give it a quick test and see how it performs before we clean it up and then we will do the cleanup and we'll make a final maze game out of it. So do share your thoughts in the comment section, like the video, share it with friends, subscribe if you haven't already subscribed to the channel and let's take a look at how the final piece worked. So there's the final piece before the cleanup. 